My name is Taylor Klein, and this is an introductory lecture on hand fractures. The key learning objectives for this presentation are to review basic hand anatomy and neurovascular supply, to identify common hand fractures, to be able to perform an examination of the hand and identify specific signs associated with certain hand fractures, to understand immediate management and definitive treatment of hand fractures, and to recognize common complications. So to begin broadly, these are the bones of the hand. They're made up of eight carpal bones, um, the metacarpals and the phalanges. For each finger, there's, except for the thumb, there is a uh, proximal, middle, and distal phalange. The thumb just has a proximal and distal phalange. This slide shows the neurovascular supply of the hand, um, which comes from the radial artery and the ulnar artery and the neurovascular supply of the hand. So you can see on the um, palmar side of the hand, the uh, median nerve provides sensory input to the thumb and the first three fingers and the half of the fourth finger. The ulnar branch provides sensory uh, sensation to the uh, uh, ulnar half of the fourth finger and the fifth finger. Um, and then on the dorsum of the hand, um, I won't go through it in detail, but you can see it there. So the, uh, the median nerve supplies the tips of the thumb, the index finger, middle finger, and half of the ring finger. And then um, more, most of the dorsum of the hand is split between the radial nerve and the ulnar nerve. Um, in the bottom corner of the slide, you can see a cross section of the index finger, which is important. I'd just like to highlight here that you can see the neurovascular bundles, which run on each side of the fingers. Um, and they're important to be considered um, with injuries of the hand. So looking at common hand fractures, uh, metacarpal fractures are the most common hand injury, um, but overall actually uh, phalangeal fractures are the most common bony injury. Um, metacarpal fractures can be divided into the location of the fracture um, from the head, neck, shaft, and base of the metacarpal. And then there's a few specific and um, common fractures that we see with presentations coming into the emergency department, for example, um, including common muted tuft fractures, uh, dorsal avulsion fractures, which are mallet fingers, uh, the boxer's fracture, Bennett fracture, and then there's special metacarpal fractures as well, especially the, um, with the scaphoid and the lunate, but those won't be covered in detail in this talk because I mean, they, they deserve their own talk. Um, but we will be looking more specifically at boxer's fractures and Bennett fracture. So to start when someone comes in with a hand injury, when you're concerned about a hand fracture, um, the first thing to do is history taking. It's important to consider the person's hand dominance and also their occupation and how this um, injury will potentially affect their, their lifestyle and their return to work. It's important to consider if the injury happened in a clean or dirty environment um, because that, that will influence if they need um, a washout, certain antibiotic choices, and future management. Uh, things like uh, crush injuries, high pressure injuries, and contact with teeth also all have specific management guidelines. And it's important to consider if there's a foreign body in the hand, the material that it's made of, and um, things that are helpful to look up are, are, are the brand um, and where it's come from. The tetanus status is important um, to consider to make sure the person's up to date. And then specific comorbidities which affect healing in hand injuries um, and bone mineral density. Uh, so things like diabetes, hypertension, and smoking. The physical exam to start can always include removing jewelry because if the person's hand continues to swell, that becomes a, pro a problem to remove later on or can, can become a problem to remove. It's important to consider if it's an open or closed wound and always to look for associated injuries, such as um, if someone has a fight fight, which is a laceration over their fifth MCP, looking for things like nail bed injuries to consider if they need a nail bed repair, um, looking for soft tissue changes, so things like swelling, deformity, discoloration, bony projections, and then um, feeling for crepitus, which can indicate an underlying fracture, 
and also assessing for snuff spots, tenderness, um, which is an important finding in scaphoid fractures. You can also do um, Doppler for digital art to assess digital artery damage, or you can do what's called an Allen's test, and that looks at the arterial supply of the head. Um, abnormal appearances, which are important to consider. Um, so the first picture shows a finger alignment cascade, and that's the idea that when a patient is making a closed fist, all of the fingers should ultimately align to point at their scaphoid. Um, and if they don't do that, like in the top right photo, you can see that there is a rotational deformity here where the fingers are overlapping, which can, under, uh, which can indicate an underlying fracture. Here in the next picture, you can see a shortening of the digit as well. And then here is a, a, an example of a mallet finger where there's actually been a, a dorsal avulsion fracture. There are certain um, specific things you can do during a physical exam which help to show the function of the nerves in the hand. So the first one is having um, the, the abduction of the thumb and the pinky, and that shows the median nerve is intact. The next one is doing the AOK -OK sign, which shows the AIN is intact. The next one is the um, uh, abduction of the fingers, which shows uh, ulnar nerve is intact. And then the last one is uh, what's called thumb retropulsion uh, with their hand flat on the table, which demonstrates the radial, uh, sorry, the radial nerve and the PIN is intact. So here's a specific kind of uh, fracture that comes in quite commonly to the ED, which is called a boxer's fracture. So on physical exam, you can see here, um, there's a shortening of the, the fifth digit. There's a bit of, if you see in this picture, there's a loss of that fifth MCP and sometimes they'll have associated fight bites, so lacerations over the MCPs, um, which can be anywhere usually over the last three MCPs. Um, and then looking at the x-ray, so broadly speaking, when you look at a, a, a hand x-ray, you can identify the fractures based on the bone that's involved, the location within the bone, um, the position of the fragments that have been fractured, and then the fracture type. Um, so here you can see that there is a fracture of the fifth uh, metacarpal neck and there, really, there should be um, AP and lateral and oblique views to be able to really visualize the, um, the uh, displacement of the fracture. So the distal fragment here is um, volarly displaced. Uh, typically these fractures are sustained from striking um, a wall or a person. Uh, with a closed hand, so with a flexed MCP joint. And then it's also important to look for other damage associated with this, um, which comes in the form of uh, collateral ligament or extensor tendon injuries, the uh, rotational deformity, and uh, dorsal bony prominence. An another common fracture is the Bennett fracture, um, and that uh, is seen here. It's usually sustained, sorry, so I'll show you here. Um, it's usually sustained from an axial load to the thumb, which results in forced abduction of the thumb. So you can see a small fragment here um, at the first uh, MCP base, which is articulating with the trapezium. There's uh, non-operative and operative options for both of these fractures. Um, so First, when someone comes in and you suspect a fracture, it's important to make sure they've got adequate analgesia. They need x-rays and PA, lateral and oblique views. And then the management depends on, um, on a few things, which I'll go over on the next slide actually. Um, but the main uh, kind of immediate management options are buddy taping or splinting. Um, it's important to give them a tetanus booster and then to consider antibiotics which change depending on if the wound's open or closed, contaminated, or if it involves uh, a human mouth. So here there's, there's pictures of two common kinds of uh, splints. So the first one is a ulnar gutter splint, which is used for um, a boxer's fracture. And that keeps, uh, it can also be used for fractures in the phalanges for um, the two through fifth fingers. Um, and there it keeps the wrist in 20 to 30 degrees of extension, the MCP in 70 to 90 degrees of flexion, and the IP joints are fully extended. 
Uh, the other one is a thumb spica splint or cast. Um, that's used for fractures in the first MCT. Um, and it's also used for a few other things like a scaphoid fracture and UCL or RCL injuries. So that has um, the forearm in ne neutral pronation supination, the wrist at 20 degrees extension, and the thumb in slight opposition towards the middle finger. The uh, management for hand fractures is surgical and non-surgical, or there are surgical and non-surgical options, um, and they depend largely on the, um, the degree of angulation, rotation, and shortening of the digit. So here's a table here, and there's, there's different criteria for each of the bones in the hand, but a, a rule of thumb generally is, or it's not a rule of thumb, is generally um, here, here in the table. So if an, uh, if an extra articular fracture has less degrees, uh, less than 10 degrees of angulation, or less than two millimeters of shaft shortening with no rotational deformity, then they can have um, non-surgical management. For surgical management, um, the common indications are if it's an open fracture, if it involves the joint, so it's intra-articular, if there's rotational malalignment, significant displacement, or severe comminution. And the two options here are um, uh, ORF or a closed, re or sorry, yeah, closed reduction with percutaneous splint. And then there's a few other things that need to be considered with hand fractures. So a very important component in the management is hand therapy. Um, hand therapy helps to um, uh, assess continued edema and wound management. Um, they help with range of motion exercises and strengthening exercises. They do sensory reintroduction um, after surgery, and then they provide um, another means of continual checking in with the patient and pain management. And then this shows an article on common complications associated with hand fractures. Um, the main ones being uh, immediately after a fracture, we have to be um, we have to be mindful of the development of compartment syndrome, and then uh, long term, uh, the patient's more likely to get um, stiffness and difficulty restoring full range of motion to that joint. Uh, this concludes my introduction on hand fractures.